I love Shuffle Knight. I have bought this game on every platform available to me. Steam, which I recorded this gameplay on, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, including most of the Amiibo, even the pre-Treasure Trove version on the Wii U. Yes, I still have a Wii U. It was a banger. Despite his addition into Smash as an assist trophy, I still think the game itself is an underrated gem. But enough doting. Shovel Knight is a retro-style 2D platformer where you play as Shovel Knight. A, uh, a knight with a shovel, I mean, it's really just that simple. However, despite this simple premise, the world and characters of Shovel Knight are absolutely full of life. To supplement this, the game has received multiple story expansions over the years since the original release. These follow Spectre Knight, who stars in a prequel to the main story, Plague Knight, whose story follows his passion for alchemy and his assistant Mona, and King Knight, whose selfishness and desperation for power is unmatched throughout the lands. I likely won't cover Plague and King Knight as their only side stories, but Spectre Knight is a possibility for another time. For now, though, we follow our true blue hero, Shovel Knight. The beginning of this story, though, is a tragic one. Shovel Knight once had a heroic partner, Shield Knight, who unfortunately was lost at the power of fate to an evil amulet's magic. With Shield Knight gone, so was Shovel Knight's spirit, so he receded into a life of isolation. This, however, left the valley vulnerable, so the Enchantress and her Order of No Quarter were able to swiftly take over. With that said, I do believe it is time to dole out some Shovel Justice. Shovel Knight's moveset is very simple, consisting of two moves. The first is swinging and scooping his shovel, and the second is your most powerful tool, the Shovel Drop. While the standing attack has its uses, combat is mostly going to see you using the Shovel Drop. With the first level starting, you may notice something. The music absolutely bangs! Shovel Knight's soundtrack is easily one of the highlights of the game. Each piece is perfectly crafted to complement its level and atmosphere. Additionally, speaking of music, every level has music sheets hidden throughout. These can be given to the local bard in town for 500 gold each, so it's recommended to keep a sharp eye out for them. Oh, look who decided to crawl out of retirement a little too late. Black Knight, step aside, the Enchantress must be stopped. All right, Shovel Bro, need you to pump the brakes real quick, because I've got some important info- Keep your lies to yourself, traitor! Dude, I'm just trying to tell you the Enchantress is- Steal thy shovel! Being that he's the first boss, Black Knight is currently far from a powerful foe. His moveset's pretty similar to yours, but he can also throw purple fireballs that can be reflected back with your shovel. I'm not lying to you, why, why would you even think that? I'm just calling a spade a spade, Black Knight! Fucking steal your shovel or whatever. With the first level done, we can now access the town, which holds a variety of useful resources. Here, you'll find the previously mentioned bard, as well as the gastronomer, who cooks to increase your health, the gotician, who can sell you meal tickets, and the magicist, who increases your maximum magic. Downstairs, you'll find a Troutful Acolyte who can sell you two Troutful Chalices, and Chester the Merchant who will sell you useful relics. With a chalice in hand, you can visit the Troutful King, who is, uh... God, what a magnificent creature. Our first target among the Order of No Quarter is King Knight, who forcibly acquired the throne with the help of the Enchantress. King Knight's castle houses a variety of dangerous obstacles, such as floating lava cauldrons, dangerously unstable chandeliers, 
wizards that throw fireballs, knights with swords and shields, massive griffins, and more. While this is an easier level, you still need to be careful or you'll find yourself in some trouble. Additionally, with a little exploring, you can find Chester, who will sell you the Flare Wand, capable of shooting two fireballs at a time straight forward. With this new weapon in hand, we're all set to make our royal debut against the King of Cards. Oh god, another one got in. Jeeves! Jeeves! There's another commoner in the throne room! Is this what you've become, King Knight? What would your mother think? Hey man, not cool. You know that's a tense situation. Because of you! Look, I don't really appreciate pointing fingers. You literally chose power over your own mother! It's time you faced shovel justice! King Knight is nothing special, despite what he may think of himself. He hops around, has a dash attack, and can call down lethal confetti that must be made of glass shards or something because it is exceptionally painful. Oh, and uh, ignore how much damage I took. I was, a I was a bit rusty getting back into the game, but it'll come back to me. As you'll see, after defeating King Knight, sometimes enemies will pop up on the overworld map. If you move to their tile, you can go through a mini-level for some extra loot. Upon returning to the town, there's actually one person we didn't see on the first time through. If you take a secret path on the left side of the basement, you'll find Mona, Plague Knight's assistant waiting with a potion-flinging minigame. If you perform well, you'll be rewarded handsomely, so it's worth dropping in at least once. Next up is the Lich Yard, home of Spectre Knight. Spectre Knight's story is a tragic one that I will unfortunately not be covering today, but this does not make him any less of an enemy or obstacle to our goal. Here at the Lich Yard, you'll encounter electric frogs, plenty of skeletons, ghosts, and even bigger skeletons on your way to the end. In this level, you can find Chester selling the Phase Locket. This locket is one of the most useful items in the game, as it temporarily lets you phase completely through enemies and certain hazards such as spikes. Lava or bottomless pits, however, are still dangerous. Shell Knight, have you... Uh, wait, wait, are, are you dead? What? No. No, I... I'm not. Oh, okay, well, well since, since you're here, you know, I just... Yeah, I... Y you know, all the undead... I and... understand, all the ghosts and... Yeah... Yeah, anyway, uh, <clears throat> Come to join Shield Knight, how have you? Preposterous! A phantom's words hold no... The, uh, the, the moment's passed. Yes, you're right. But soon, so shall your life. Spectre Knight was, for me, a heavy step up in difficulty from King Knight. He's not the kind of boss to just charge straight out in brute force, rather it's best to take advantage of his teleporting patterns to score some consistent damage. Generally, Spectre Knight will teleport to the opposite corner, like top right to bottom left, so you can take advantage of this whenever he throws his scythe to quickly move into position. His attack patterns are simple, but the size of his scythe can make it tricky to dodge. With a little practice, or travel light for, he'll promptly be sent packing back to the Enchantress.
With another night passed, we can make a quick run through the pop-up treasure level, have a pit stop in town, and move on. Just up ahead is another treasure level, but this one is different from the pop-up level in that it's one of a series of bonus levels that intend the use of a specific relic to get through for some extra loot. This one, for example, uses the phase locket to bypass spikes and enemies. So, up next is Plague Knight's Explodatorium. As the name implies, there are lots of explosives here. For example, we have a new variant of rats. Bombs. They're just bombs on legs. Additionally, there are two kinds of birds. Normal looking birds that fly and drop exploding functions from above, and the fat bastards that hop around and throw like three at a time. Alongside the enemies, there are now flame pillars that shoot out of the ground when you walk on the thingies they come from, or in other cases, follow a repetitive pattern. The relic you can get in this level is the alchemy coin, but I actually messed up and missed it, so I bought it from Chester back in town. Shovel Knight, leave me to my work. Plague Knight, I ran into your diabolical assistant Mona in town. You wait, you did? You didn't hurt her or anything, did you? Oh, you could say I played some games with her. You what? I'll destroy you! Plague Knight is a bit of a wild card in the way he fights. He jumps around frantically, spawns cauldrons that you can bounce on, throws potions with various effects, and teleports. Personally, I think he's one of my favorite fights. There's a lot going on, but honestly, if you keep on the move with him, you shouldn't have too much trouble. Just like Mona's potion game, you are no match for Shovel Justice! What? After being Plague Knight, we're met with a new, unique challenger on the map. His name is Raze, and he's a little... Uh, misguided. He fights with a pair of boomerangs and a bit of magic surrounding himself with fireballs. The boomerangs can be a little tricky to dodge, so be careful. After knocking a little sense into him, we amicably part ways and continue our journey. Now that we can move past the Explodatorium, we're able to access the Armor Outpost. Here, you can buy various armor and shovel upgrades, but I'm currently poor, so we'll come back to that. Upon leaving the outpost, we'll find yet another strange traveler. This time, it's Baz, a hulking warrior who is very upset that he was rejected by the Order of No Quarter. Baz fights with a lasso, allowing him to guard against shovel drops and swing around the arena, and uh, he also uses lightning magic. He put up a good fight, but ultimately is no match for the fearsome might of Shovel Justice. As he aspires to be a knight, however, surely he will take this opportunity to grow and... Oh. Oh, well, this is, um... This is uncomfortable. After stealing what little money Baz had, we can return to Mr. Hat's store at the Armor Outpost. Once you assist the customers in clearing out his inventory, he will take notice of the splendid helmet glistening upon our noble head. Unfortunately, he's a little too fixated on it and attempts to take it by force. Mr. Hat is an interesting opponent who gets various powers from the hat he wears. In this fight, he swaps between two, allowing him to fight with swords and what I believe are diamonds. Fortunately, his style is no match for ours, and our beautiful helmet prevails. Before finally moving on, I grab the Dynamo Mail, which charges your shovel after two consecutive bounce attacks, allowing your next strike to do double damage. With all of that taken care of, our next stop is the Iron Whale, helmed by Treasure Knight. As every great platformer must, Shovel Knight has an obligatory water level, and we are taking the plunge into it. His motivation, as you might guess, is that he simply wants all the treasure. The Iron Whale, his fortress, is a fair bit trickier to navigate than the previous areas. Primarily, there are a lot more spike hazards here, which makes it very easy to die instantly in many locations if you aren't careful. Also of note are the snails scattered around. 
After defeating the red ones, their shell can be launched to destroy sand blocks, while the grey ones are fully invulnerable and may be bounced off of in certain situations. Partway through the level, you'll find an oddly conspicuous relic chest. As you might guess, it's a trap. If you don't keep a level head, this part can really suck! If you aren't thinking clearly, it's easy to get clipped by one of the eels and knocked into the bottomless pit. Just keep calm and be careful, unlike me if you're wondering why I'm reiterating it so much, who got tilted after one or two deaths and struggled a lot more than I should have. Once you defeat the giant anglerfish, you'll be able to buy the throwing anchor from Chester. The anchor is thrown in an arc and passes through enemies, allowing you to take out a few at once with a well-timed shot. Your very presence tarnishes these waters. Down with billionaires! But I wasn't done. Eat the rich! Wait, it's not like that. This money's going to charity! Poor shovel justice! Treasure Knight honestly is a pretty easy boss. I played a little balls to the wall because I was confident, but if you don't want to be so risky, pretty much all of his attacks are heavily telegraphed. He uses his anchor chain to pull himself around the stage and causes shockwaves by slamming into the ground, which is actually made up of gold coins. In the quickest time so far, Treasure Knight's greed was brought to an end. With a fresh load of loot, we can stop by the armor outpost again and grab some upgrades. For the moment, I snagged the charge attack, which I uh, never actually used, and the trench blade, which allows you to dig up piles of treasure in one swing. Our fifth stop is the underground Lost City, overseen by Mole Knight. Just like the fiery hazards within, the music of this level will melt your entire face off. Lost City definitely has one of my favorite tracks, which I just felt worth noting. Being that we're underground now, lava is a pretty consistent obstacle here. As I've previously mentioned, lava is functionally the same as a bottomless pit, meaning the phase locket won't save you from it. Almost more dangerous, though, are these stupid flying bird head things. Hate those guys. Anyway, the relic you'll be acquiring here is the Dust Knuckles. These offer an additional form of traversal by punching through sand blocks, which propels you forward. Basically, if there's blocks above the ground, you can fly for as long as they continue. Another fun mechanic of this level are the slime balls, which you can knock onto the lava to turn it into a harmless bounce pad. None of this is a match for our mighty shovel, however, as we dig through the tunnels to face Mole Knight. <laughs> is something funny, Mole Knight? <laughs> Is that what you dug your way here with? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what? It's a good <laughs> shovel! <laughs> if you wanted to make a sandcastle, maybe. <laughs> you, uh, you good, man? You've crossed a line, there's no coming back from Mole Knight. What? For Shovel Justice! Mole Knight isn't too hard, but he requires a little patience, which, uh, I, I was lacking. He has some extremely predictable full screen attacks and will sometimes dig underground. However, when he's coming up, you can see which dirt mound he's in by looking for his visor. Additionally, he'll coat himself in fire once or twice, during which you can't hit him with your shovel. I didn't test it with a projectile like the anchor, so maybe that would work, but I'm not sure. Finally, he'll drop blocks from the ceiling, but even these walls of dirt and rock won't keep him safe from shovel justice.
Upon evicting Mole Knight, you'll notice two enemies pop up on the minimap. One is a plain Knight minion, meaning it's just another free loot stage, but the other is our old friend Black Knight. It would be perfect. You already look evil and everything. We'd be unstoppable. First of all, I look cool, not evil. Second, I'm trying to help you here, so can you just listen to me? The Enchantress, tell me where she- Dude, come on, I was in the middle of something. Something evil, no doubt, under the influence of the Enchantress. Why do people keep going to you? Whatever, you know, this is perfect timing. Look, you need to stop. The Enchantress is buying your loyalty in spades, apparently. Enough with the goddamn puns. I will be reaching the Tower of Fate, Black Knight. If that's how it's gonna be, then pipe down and steal thy shovel. Black Knight still follows the same general game plan where he's a bit faster, jumps a bit higher, and is overall turned up a notch from the previous encounter. As usual though, we're on a mission, and even the Dark Spade is no match for Shovel Justice. With him out of the way, we can move on once more. Our pockets are now properly lined with gold, allowing us to grab the spectacular gold armor and the final shovel upgrade, which is a reference to Legend of Zelda's sword beam. Our next target then is Tinker Knight's Clockwork Tower. This level is filled to the brim with fast-moving treadmills, meaning you need to be especially careful with your movement. Wizards no longer shoot fireballs, rather they throw small gears that travel along the ground, and you'll occasionally encounter even larger gears that can be bounced on to avoid obstacles like spikes. Our relic this time is the Metal Gear, a piece of weaponry capable of- <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry. Our relic this time is the Mobile Gear. After placing it on the ground, you can jump on it to safely ride across spikes and small jumps. With that in hand, we can make our way to the Tiny Tinkerer himself. Can you be quiet? You're distracting me from my magnum opus. Oh, well, you could just let me be on my way then, little guy. Little? Oh, you're fucking dead. Whoa, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend. You've really done it now. I'm gonna beat you up so good. Come on, big man, it doesn't have to be this way. Stop talking! Well, I tried to stop him. They all laughed at me. I'll show everyone! Sweet Shovel Justice! So Tinker Knight had a little bit of extra firepower up his sleeve. Ironically though, this is potentially one of the easiest fights, if you can keep your footing. He's certainly intimidating at a first glance, but you know how things go by now. No weapon of war is a match for Shovel Justice. There is no resting though, as our next stop is another traveling opponent. This time it's Phantom Striker, a fencer with lightning abilities. He kinda just wants to fight for the sake of fighting. I promise you he's not that bad, but I tried to be a little extra saucy by fighting with the dust knuckles and it put me in a slight pickle. Just exert basic patience, unlike me, and it'll be a cakewalk. Finally, with a bit of extra gold in our pocket, we can explore the Hall of Champions. This place is interesting, as once you go inside, you find out it's haunted and you're immediately locked in. It might take a minute, but all you'd have to do is go from room to room and defeat all the ghosts, followed by a boss. 
Though it may seem tedious, it is absolutely worth it. You see, if we go into this side room... This is, as far as I remember, the only hidden path in the game that is revealed through a shovel drop rather than striking a wall. With the curious map acquired, we can find ourselves meeting with an unexpected trio. They can empathize with our plight of attempting to overthrow an evil magic lady, so they're offering to share some training! You know, I, I mean, I know we just met, but like, these guys seem pretty cool! Never. Again. So after traumatizing our blue buddy, the Battletoads gift him the Toad Armor. This armor is far from bad, but it does completely change up your game plan. You can now sprint and shoulder bash, and your basic shovel swipe is replaced by a smaller jab that connects into a combo attack, which deals extra damage. The change that I am the least fond of is to the shovel drop. There might be some way to get around this that I'm not aware of, but your shovel drop is now empowered and sends you straight through dirt blocks rather than bouncing off of them. This can be, uh, problematic. Oh yeah, and we're testing this armor out in the stranded ship, Polar Knight's Domain. There are a lot of spikes here. So anyway, the relic to be acquired here is the Warhorn, which has massive area of effect damage. I love it. Did I mention there's a lot of spikes? Another interesting gimmick in this level are the floating rainbow fountain things. I'm not sure what they are, but I mean, they're certainly unique. After traversing the very cool and fun level design of <coughs> this stranded ship, it's time to face down Polar Knight. Don't make me do this, Polar Knight. Yoda's power is unstoppable. I know you know this. Join us. And you know I can't do that, old friend. Then may the everlasting cold take you mercifully. <sighs> Very well. Steal thy shovel. Polar Knight is the most dangerous enemy we've faced so far, primarily due to the arena we're facing him in. Throughout the battle, he'll occasionally tear up the ice beneath, revealing spikes in their place. Thus far, this is our first threat of instant death against one of the knights, but it won't be the last. Polar Knight will also throw snowballs and block shovel drops, but with quick reflexes and careful action, you can maintain control of the battlefield. and all upgrades acquired, we no longer have any pit stops to make. As such, we move on to the final member of the order, Propeller Knight and his flying machine. This level is, as one might expect, full of bottomless pits. The entire place is flying, after all. You might even start feeling a bit of nostalgia, as there will be innumerable cannonballs to bounce on as you fight through. Reminiscent of a, uh, certain plumber's adventures, one might say, you know? The final relic we will be acquiring is the Propeller Dagger. This weapon allows you to briefly fly forward midair, allowing you to cross previously impossible gaps. It can be a lifesaver, but if you're not careful, it can also do just the opposite. Speaking of being careful, I know I've talked a lot about patience, but this level quite possibly requires the most of it. I allowed myself to get pretty impatient and frustrated, which caused me a lot of trouble. Whatever you do... Just keep a cool head and you'll be alright. That said, it's time to ground this pretentious poser. Get down here, Propeller Knight! No! You are mad at me! No, I... Wait, what? If I come down, you're going to yell at me! I... I actually figured we'd fight, you know? So you are not mad? Are you going to let me go to the Tower of Fate? Oh, hell no, but... Then I'm furious! As I previously mentioned, Polar Knight was not our last encounter with a dangerous venue. 
You can fall off the left and right sides of this arena, but that isn't quite as dangerous as the holes that are going to be made by giant cannonballs. The Brother Knight himself is arguably not very difficult, but his lethality is certainly compounded by the danger of the stage. I believe that if the fight goes long enough, you'll enter a free fall style section, but I ended things pretty quickly so I can't remember for certain. Regardless, with this flying fanatic felled, there's no longer anything between us and the tower. At long last, we're here. The Tower of Fate. As one might expect, the tower is no cakewalk. Within it is a culmination of everything we've faced so far, and it is brutal. Flying lava fish, gear wizards, moles and treasure piles, magic books all in the first couple minutes. As with all the other main levels, I'm not going to cover the tower step by step. You'll just have to play and experience it for yourself. That said, once we make our way past the rampart into the entrance, we find ourselves running into a familiar face one more time. Last chance, Shovel Knight. Get out of here. I will reach her, Black Knight. Even you won't stop me. Black Knight, sweetie, are you guarding my tower? Finally had a change of heart. You may kneel and pledge your loyalty now. Haven't I told you enough? I answer to nobody! Very well. In that case, have a taste of the power you so bravely spurned. Black Knight! I warned you to stay away! What can your shovel justice do against this level of power? Oh, that it must, my friend! Tch, tough talk from such a dull blade. The final duel with Black Knight is, in my opinion, the most epic in Shovel of Hope. All of his abilities are drastically enhanced alongside new ones. He can now move around at super speed and throw a myriad of fireballs rather than just a few. Additionally, he can fly and even call down meteors from the sky, which he can then destroy and use his projectiles again. Enough of this! Whatever your plan, you can't reach her! Ugh. You may be right. She may already be lost. But I'm not giving up hope. You already know now, don't you? I do. Any ideas to bring her back? I've only tried words. She's just so strong. I was afraid. Just... go. If you hurt her, though... You'll answer to me. Now that we're inside the tower, things only get more difficult. Spikes, lava, and bottomless pits are everywhere, alongside plenty of minions to throw you into all of them. There's been no looming threat of death more present than here, so your utmost focus will be required. However, as you ascend the tower, your goal draws near. When you make it to the top, after much anticipation, you find yourself face to face with... 
the uh, the entire order again. So these guys are a little upset with you, which I mean, fair, but they did choose to be the bad guys. So simple premise: we've got a boss rush. Fortunately, after every fight, you're provided with a chicken to refresh, and none of the knights have any new tricks, so we're more than prepared to take them down once more. After defeating the Order, they'll beg you to save them as they hang for their lives. Naturally, they should be saved. They're a knight, not an executioner. At long last, once again, we arrive at the real end. It starts off with a simple but deceptively difficult encounter. The floor below you is your enemy, and below that is a pit of lava. Just focus as always, and you'll be fine. Maybe after a few tries to memorize the pattern, because it is always the same. Following that is an empty void where the floor, rather than attacking you, forms under your feet as you move. Be as careful as you need to here as you can only see so far ahead. It's a beautiful night, isn't it? Shield Knight! Come with me! We can leave! Pathetic chasing ghosts and false hopes. So, have you come to slay me, knight? Avenge your beloved. Gaze into my eyes. See how fearful I am. Watch me cower as you draw your blade. I don't need a blade to fight evil. Shield Knight, I know you aren't lost forever. You haven't the slightest hope of defeating me, but I won't stop you from trying. So please, let us dance together into the abyss! The Enchantress is unfortunately just as powerful as she believes herself to be. Even worse, though, the ground beneath our feet is just the opposite. While her magic attacks are dangerous, a lack of sure footing is even more so. She'll often be out of reach, so don't push your luck too much. I would advise taking things slow and prioritizing the ground beneath your feet above all else. Her attacks will destroy the ground, but she'll also bring it right back. And if you carefully bait out the positioning, you can get a pretty good bit of coverage back. So after a long journey and some careful execution, the Enchantress is as good as done. You caught me. Of course. I've been practicing. Uh, how? In my dreams. God, I miss that shovel-headedness of yours. I can't believe you never gave up on me. I will never give up on you. I will follow you to the end of the world. It would appear that maybe you have. What's happening? Bad stuff. And we gotta stop it or the world ends. But we're both weak from battle. Speak for yourself, Goldilocks. Hope you didn't think I was serious. When I said I think Black Knight's final fight is the most epic, this one is a close second. Fighting alongside Shield Knight and watching her block the attention of the attacks for the first time is an awesome feeling. Despite the spectacle at hand though, this is still very much a real fight. Once again, you will lose some of your footing, but not nearly as dangerously as last time. In order to attack the Enchantress now, you have to bounce off of Shield Knight at the right time to get high enough to do damage. Additionally, if you're good enough with the Pillar Dagger, you can actually keep up with her as she moves side to side and finish this without even falling back to the ground. It's over, Shovel Knight! This place is falling apart, we have to get out of here! Let's go! I know a path! Shield Knight! Black Knight, thank goodness you're here. Shovel Knight is wounded. Take him and go outside. No! I can't leave you behind. How will you escape? This magic is too strong. I can't hold out. 
Much longer! Run! You can't deflect it! It will tear you apart! I'm so happy. I got to see you both. One last time. Shield Knight! Go! Take Shovel Knight! Save him! Promise me you'll save him! Hi, first of all, if you made it this far, thank you so very much. It's been a long time, I know, and if you don't want to listen to my rambling, go ahead and skip past this, but if you did make it this far, there is one more piece of the ending I think you will want to see. I'll try to keep this quick, but basically, the reason for my absence was mostly college. Uh, that was a lot of work. I graduated in May, so that is a burden lifted off of me that should hopefully increase my productivity here by some amount. And in February, when I was on a really good roll working on this Shovel Knight video, I had to get my gallbladder out. And that was a pretty massive setback on uh, motivation to work, as you might imagine. However, in good news, for the few stragglers that might be here since my first video, so over six months ago, I'm planning to cover Devil May Cry 2 next, so it should be a lot quicker than the past two big videos, but we'll see. Safe at last. I kept my promise, Shield Knight. Rest well, Shovel Knight. Until we meet again, you truly did have honor in spades. Once again, I do just want to say thank you. I do appreciate every one of you.